Hello Algebra 1 students, this is Mr. Wilsey, and in this video we're going to be talking about absolute value, equations, and inequalities. So let's dive right into this. What do you know about absolute value? I am assuming that you have studied it before in middle school, um, but you probably forgot the ins and outs of what absolute value is. If I ask you this question at the top, the absolute value of negative 4 is what? Would you be able to answer that? Well, hopefully you can remember that the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. The absolute value of positive 4 is also positive 4. So whenever we ask what is the absolute value of a number, all we do is we strip off the negative sign if there is one there. If there isn't one there, then we just keep the number the same. All right? So absolute value... One way to think about it is that it just strips off the negative sign attached to a number. The way that we write absolute value is like this. We have two bars around the number. So this statement right here says the absolute value of negative 4 equals what? And of course now we know how to finish this equation, simply positive 4. Same thing over here, absolute value of positive 4 is equal to positive 4. Now, another way to think about what absolute value means is that, in this case, the absolute value tells you how far away a number is from zero. So on my number line down here, it's pretty clear to see that positive 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4 units away from zero, and negative 4 is also 1, 2, 3, 4 units away from zero. So absolute value, another way to think about it is that it tells you how far away a number is from zero regardless of the direction that you go in to get there. Alright, let's see some more examples. Let's say we have an equation here. Solve this equation. The absolute value of x equals 8. So one way to think about this is what numbers are 8 units away from zero? Well, I hope that it's pretty clear that there are two numbers that are 8 units away from 0. x could be positive 8, but it could also be negative 8. So there are two solutions to most absolute value equations. All right, let's take a look at this one. The absolute value of z equals negative 3. If we were asked to solve this equation, how would we go about doing it? Well, remember that absolute value has to do with distance. And distance is never negative. So keeping this idea in mind, if you ever, ever, ever see an equation in which an absolute value of something is equal to a negative number, you can immediately say that there is no solution to this equation. Now if you're not happy with that explanation, here's another way to think about it. Remember that absolute value strips off the negative sign from a number. So the absolute value of anything, whether it's negative or whether it's positive, the result will always be positive. There's no way that an absolute value can ever equal a negative number. So I hope that explanation is satisfactory to those of you who weren't satisfied with the first one. Okay, let's look at some more examples. All right, let's say that we are asked to solve this absolute value equation. Now, the first step to solving any absolute value equation, always, is to isolate the absolute value. Remember these two bars here, I know that just turned into a, like a robot smiley face, but these two bars indicate absolute value. So we have to isolate the absolute value. So in this absolute value equation, we have to isolate the absolute value of n. How do we do that? Well, we have to move the 5 to the other side of the equation, and we do that by adding 5 to both sides. So, 
the absolute value of n is equal to positive 3. All right, from here, we know that n could either be positive 3 or n could be negative 3. And that's it. That's our solution. Okay? So lesson learned from this problem, isolate the absolute value before you do anything else. All right, let's look at another example. Okay, so in this equation, if we're asked to solve it, our absolute value is already isolated. Okay, don't even think about trying to add 8 to both sides yet because the 8 is trapped inside the absolute value. You can think of the absolute value bars as like a prison and you can't break anything out of the prison. So if we can't break anything out of the prison, how in the world do we solve this equation? Well, here's how you solve equations like this. First of all, draw two arrows, one going to the left, one going to the right. On the left side, this is what you're going to write. r minus 8 equals positive 5. In other words, you write exactly what you see in the original equation, except you get rid of the absolute value bars. All right, so that's easy enough. Now over on the right side, you're going to write the original equation, r minus 8 equals, except whatever's on the other side of the equation as the absolute value, you're going to make it negative, negative 5. All right, so I hope that wasn't too bad. Now from here, you have two separate equations to solve. So, let's solve the one on the left, first of all. We add 8 to both sides. So r equals 13. Now, let's solve the equation on the right-hand side. We add 8 to both sides again. So r equals negative 5 plus 8 is 3. All right. Like before, we have two solutions to this absolute value equation, which will ordinarily be the case. Now, as we look at more complicated absolute value equations, it will be more difficult to understand what this equation is saying. But I'm going to try to tell you what this equation is saying while it's still relatively simple. I'm going to draw out my number line again. All right, now our solutions are 3, and 13, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now I also want to lay down the number 8, which is right here. Now notice that the number 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from 8. And the number 13 is also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units away from 8. So whenever we have an absolute value equation that looks like this, where the unknown is inside the absolute value and nothing is multiplying it, and you have a minus sign followed by a single number, and it's equal to a single positive number. So whenever you have an absolute value equation that looks like this, what this is saying is what numbers are five units away from positive 8. And the solutions, of course, are 3 and 13. They are both 5 units away from positive 8. Isn't that kind of cool? Maybe? No? All right. Well, let's move on then. Okay, so let's look at this equation now. Now, as always, the very first step to solving any absolute value equation is to isolate the absolute value. In order to do that, in this case, we have to divide both sides by 5. So the absolute value of d is equal to positive 4. All right, from here, we're going to split the absolute value equation that we have into 2. What's inside the absolute value is equal to positive 4. And then what's inside the absolute value is equal to negative 4. 
and the connecting word is or. Okay, so that's easy enough. Another example down. All right, now let's look at this one. Ugh, that looks ugly, right? Three times the absolute value of x plus 2 plus 4 equals 13. How in the world do we approach this? Well, just like in all of the others, the first goal is to isolate the absolute value. So that means we have to move the 4 to the other side of the equation, and we also have to move the 3 to the other side of the equation. The first one that we move is going to be the 4. We do that by subtracting 4. And then we divide both sides by 3. Now notice that I'm dividing by 3. It is not possible to distribute the 3 into the absolute value. Right? These are absolute value bars. It's like prison. Nothing gets out, nothing gets in, including the 3. You cannot distribute it. Okay? Don't try. All right, so once we divide both sides by 3, we're left with absolute value of x plus 2 equals positive 3. Now, we have successfully isolated our absolute value. The next step is to split. Split. Whoosh. Whoosh. Now, can you think of what to write on the left side over here? I hope you said x plus 2 equals positive 3. So we just got rid of the absolute value bars. Now, even more challenging, can you think about what to write over here? I hope you said x plus 2 equals negative 3. Okay, so we have two separate equations. Easy enough to solve. Minus 2 on both sides. x equals 1. Minus 2 on both sides over here x equals negative 5. All right? So there are two possible solutions, x equals 1 or x equals negative 5. OK, let's move on. So this is a word problem here, OK? We have Serena, a little girl here, and she is skating toward this gentleman, Darius. Now Serena is moving with a speed of 20 feet per second. She starts at a distance of 100 feet away from Darius. So we're going to say that when the time equals 0 seconds, Serena is 100 feet away from Darius. Now how far away is she going to be after 1 second? Well, she's going to be 80 feet away. What about after two seconds? She's going to be 60 feet away. What about after three seconds? 40, and so on. So the question is, at what time or times is Serena 60 feet from Darius? Well, it's pretty clear that when the time is two seconds, Serena is 60 feet away from Darius. But is this the only time? that she's 60 feet away. What if we continue this table? So four seconds, she's 20 feet away. At five seconds, she's zero feet away. So she is just passing Darius at time equals five seconds. How far away is she when the time is six seconds? Well, now she's over here. She's already passed Darius, and now she's getting further away from Darius but she's still traveling at the same speed, 20 feet per second, so now she's 20 feet away. At 7 seconds, she's 40 feet away, and at 8 seconds, she's 60 feet away again. And then 9 seconds, she's even further away. So from here, it's pretty clear to see that there are now two solutions. Serena is 60 feet away when the time is 2 seconds and when the time is 8 seconds. Now this is a real-world application of absolute value. You can actually write an absolute value equation representing the situation and solve it to get these two solutions. 
Here's the equation that you would write. Now, don't worry about how I get this equation. Just recognize that it can be written and can be solved. 100 minus 20 times t, all in absolute value, is equal to 60. Do you kind of see where I get these numbers from? If it's not clear, that's okay. But what I want to do now is I want to solve this absolute value equation for t. All right, so absolute value is isolated. So that means the next step is to split. So 100 minus 20t equals positive 60. And 100 minus 20t equals negative 60. Okay, so from here, subtract 100. Negative 20t equals negative 40. Negative 20 is divided on both sides. So t equals positive 2. And then over here, you do the exact same steps, and you wind up with t equals 8. All right? So these are the two solutions that we found by making a diagram, by making a table from our diagram. t equals 2 seconds and t equals 8 seconds. All right, so I hope that this helps to elucidate a possible application of absolute value equations. All right, so that's all that I wanted to cover in this video. I still need to talk about absolute value inequalities and how to solve and how to interpret them. Uh, but other than that, I hope that you're ready to begin practicing.